everyone. Good evening. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, everyone. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, happy Sabbath, Sister Jackie. Yeah, can you unmute and say happy Sabbath, please? Can you unmute and say happy Sabbath? It's a happy time. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. You shout happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining in. It's, uh, I just want to thank God that we can have this time, you know, to come together to worship God for all that he's done to us. He's always faithful. And we have got every reason to be thankful to him. I want to welcome each and every one of you. Uh, uh, thank you for sparing your time to come and join us. I know I've got some friends from Kenya. Abel, I just want to welcome you, and it's, it, I'm very, very grateful that you found time to come and join us. So before I continue, I just want to say a word of prayer. We can never have enough prayers. Let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our kind and most loving Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, we come before you with thanksgiving in our heart. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of life. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can have this opportunity to gather here to worship you. Father, as I'm going to speak, I pray that may you use me as a vessel. Lord Jesus, you know I'm not worthy to stand, to stand before you, but Father, we pray that may you use me as a vessel. King of all kings, I pray that may the word that I'm going to share may be nourishing to each and every one. I pray for blessing to each and every one who joined here and their families. Lord, I pray that may you visit each and every person, Lord Jesus. Touch them in their point of need as we start our Sabbath. Father, we pray that may your Holy Spirit be with us. May you guide us, Lord Jesus, and may we find joy and may we find rest in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are always faithful. Thank you for being with us. Be with us now to the end. In your mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it's always uh, a pleasure. And of course, it's always a big task to speak. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get any better. But you know what? I always thank God every time I'm given the opportunity. And uh, I will never turn it down because I think um, God wants to use each and every one of us. So my topic today, I just want us to share, uh, my, I've, I've titled my topic, is prayer your steering wheel or is it your spare tire? Is prayer your steering wheel or is it a spare tire? So I remember growing up in the village when I was a little girl, you know, I only used to see cars once in a while because I grew up deep down in the village. We we did not have cars or we only happened to see cars once in a while. And it, I always marveled. I always marveled and wondered how could a car, how does it move? How does it know? To me, it's almost like a car had a brain. It knew where to go and where not to go. I did not know how that happened. I only came to understand when I started driving. That's when it all came together. So brothers and sisters, tonight I want to ask you this question. How hard is it? I believe that majority of us have driven a car or have been inside a car. So the big question is, how hard is it to let the steering, the steering wheel is it so easy for you when you're driving to just let the steering wheel go? The same question I want to ask, how hard is it for you to let the steering wheel of life and let God drive you? Without the steering wheel, in a good working condition, I'm telling you, my brother, that it will be so hard and so difficult for any one of us to go anywhere. The steering wheel is essential to my being able to use my car. The steering wheel allows me to choose the direction in which I need to go, keeps me on the road and helps me to avoid any road hazards. 
How often do you use the steering wheel in your car? How often do you use the steering wheel in your car? Obviously, every time you enter your car, you use the steering wheel. What about the spare tire? How often do you use it? I have never, personally, I've got a little car, a, a yellow car, I've had it for over 12 years. But believe me not, it's only about two weeks ago that we realized that all these years we had a spare tire because we never, we never needed it. It's only when uh, Ian was going down the road and uh, uh, he had a puncture and he came back home and he was like, what are we going to do? Uh, I've, got a, I've got a puncture. And then we were like, okay, we need to call for maybe a repair or something. Then we looked in the boot and we were shocked. We were amazed that all these years we've had a spare tire in the boot and we never needed it. So think about what your prayer life is like. How often do you pray? Do you pray only when you are in need of something? Do you pray only when something bad has happened? Do you pray only when you need to? Is prayer your last resort? If that is the case, prayer to you is like a spare tire. Or are you the sort of are you the kind of a person who always prays? Do you pray immediately when you wake up in the morning? Before you leave your house, do you pray in good times and bad times as well? Do you pray without ceasing? If so, then prayer is your steering wheel. Many of us want to ask, many of us want to use God like a spare tire rather than a spare rather than a steering wheel. We want to wait until we have spiritual blowouts and see if God will come and help us rather than doing what Jesus asked us to do, to seek first the kingdom of heaven, to seek first the righteousness and he, all these other things that we need will be added unto us. Do you only pray when you are in trouble? I find that when things are going really well, personally, I don't talk to God as I should do. Life gets so busy and we fill our days with so much that we don't leave time to spend with God in prayer. In a world, we live in a world filled up with things that make us forget about God. And God wants us not to forget about him. Remember the children of Israel. God told them, I'm taking you to the promised land. But when you get there, when you get there, you get very wealthy and you get very comfortable. Please do not forget me. But what did they do? They did exactly the opposite of what God told them. God already knows our needs and desires, but he still wants us to come to him and ask for them in the name of Jesus Christ. How Jesus Christ, don't wait until you are in need or want something in order to go to God. You need, you and I need to establish our prayer life. Allow God to rule your life. Allow God to control your life. We all need to surrender everything to Christ. In the book of Matthew 7 verses 7 to 9, in the book of Matthew 7 verses 7 to 9, it tells us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, find. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. 
Which of you, if your son asks for bread, we give him a stone? That's a big question. We as parents, majority of us, I believe, or you've been an auntie or an uncle, when a little kid asks you for something, you will always give it to them. You will not give something they have not asked. But the question is, what about our God, the one and only person who loves us unconditionally? What about if you go to him with our needs? The Bible promises us that he will, if we ask in his name, he will provide according to his will. Is prayer our first hope or last ditched effort? Do we go direct to God in difficult times or do we utter the appalling statements like, all we are left now is to pray? Can you imagine what God thinks when he hears that statement? All we are saying is that, God, we have tried everything. We have made all attempts. We have gone to the experts. But you know what? It had not succeeded. So all we are left for is to come to you in prayer. Can you think about what God thinks when he hears those appalling words? Is your prayer life today your steering wheel? Is it what drives you in your life? Or is it your spare tire? Something you fall back to when things go wrong. No matter what you are going through, brothers and sisters, God can come to your rescue. He is all-powerful and all-knowing. No matter what you're going through today, just want to repeat that to everyone. No matter what you're going through today, don't forget that God can come to your rescue. He says that he will never leave us, nor forsake us. You know what? The greatest tragedies in life is not an answered prayers, my brothers and sisters. The greatest tragedy in life is an offered prayer the prayers that we don't offer to God. Maybe it's not, if, it's not if you call on God, but also it's how do you call on God? God wants our full attention on daily basis. The book of Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 reminds us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. But what do we do? We always tend to lean on our own understanding. We want to interpret things to suit us. But we have been warned. We should not lean on our own understanding, but we should acknowledge God, and he will direct our path. Do you know people from whom you never hear a word unless they want something? I have lots of friends who, when I see their phone call or when I see their text, then I know there is something. Imagine this is also the way God feels. So when uh, these this is the same way, like if we only go to God when we want something, this is just exactly the same way like our friends do. So some of us are treating God as a spare tire, someone we go to only when we need something. The word of God says we need to pray without ceasing. In the first Thessalonians 5 verses 17. Remember that your prayers does not always have to be a request because also majority of us, me included, we tend to go to God when we need something. But we have been told that we also need to go to God with thanksgiving 
for all that he's done to us and for all that he's going to do to us. Sometimes when you go to God in prayer, just thank him for all that he's done for you and all that you know he's going to do for he's always faithful. Pray for others, brothers and sisters. Let us pray for peace in the world. Pray for who God is in your life. We need to pray God to open our heart and to give us the desire to want to know more about him, to want to be closer and closer to him. Let's keep the prayer wheel turning each and every minute, each and every day. And you won't need a spare tire when it comes to your needs being supplied because he will always make sure that they are supplied. Because the book of Psalms tells us that God is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know why? You will not want because he will already have supplied all your needs. You can never learn that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. If you look unto the world, you'll be so distressed. If you look within yourself, you'll be so depressed. But brothers and sisters, if you look at Christ, you will have peace. You will have rest. Bring all your burdens unto the Lord and he will give you rest. So brothers and sisters, here are four powerful steps on how we can let prayer live. Prayer be our steering wheel. How can we let prayer be our steering wheel and not our spare tire? Number one, we need to pray daily. Number two, we need to pray with passion. We need to pray with intensity. Remember uh, uh, the disciples, when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. They prayed with intensity and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Number three, pray without ceasing. In the book of Romans 12, verses 12, it tells us, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and be persistent in prayer. Always pray without ceasing. Be consistent in your prayer. And number four, pray with expectations. As, uh, as we say prayer, some of us don't really believe that God is going to answer them. So uh, there's a little story uh, of a woman who was working. This lady, she was at work and then she received a phone call that her daughter was not feeling well. So she left work very quickly, uh, picked her keys and drove to the pharmacy to get some medication. She got the medication, got back to her car, but guess what? She realized that she had locked her keys in the car. Can you imagine the stress with a sick child waiting at home? So the lady looked around and couldn't see anyone. All she saw was an old rusty coat hanger. So she picked it up, looked at it, but she didn't know what to do with it. She'd heard that people can use a wire to open the, uh, you know, locks and stuff like that, but she had no clue. So what did she do? She bowed her head and asked God for help. So within a few minutes, an old rusty car pulled up. A dusty, greasy, bearded man who was wearing an old rug on his head came out and said to the lady, no, when the lady saw this, 
she was not happy at all. She was she was, thought in her heart, in her heart she thought God, is this the help you're sending me? But all in all, she thought at least it's someone. It's better than nothing. So the man got out and asked the lady what she needed, and the lady said, "What happened?" So she gave out the she gave in the story, and the man took the hanger. I walked to the car, and in less than a minute, the car was opened. So she hugged the man, and through her tears, she said, "Thank you so much." You're such a nice man. The man re replied and said, lady, I am not a nice man at all. I just got out of prison today. I was in prison for car theft. And I have only been out for an hour. The woman hugged the man again and without with so much sobbing and tears rolling down her tears, said, oh God, thank you so much. You are so wonderful. You even sent me a, professor, a professional. So sometimes we don't know how God is gonna answer our prayer. So we need to pray with expectation. Therefore, I tell you, everything you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. You can find those words in the book of Mark 14 verses, in the book of Mark 11 verses 24. James 4 verses 3 reminds us, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. How many of us, how many of us pray for selfish reasons? How many of us ask things just for us? God is all powerful. He can look into our hearts and he knows the reason. So sometimes we pray and we think our prayers have not been answered, but by our prayers not being answered, God is answering them because he knows the best thing for you. So pray with expectation that you serve a God, a mighty God enough to deliver on anything you ask on him. Pray and stand on his promises. Surrender all to Jesus. Pray expecting him to move that mountain for you. Don't resort your prayer life to a spare tire mentality, brothers and sisters. I'll repeat that. Don't resort your prayer life to a spare tire mentality. Let it be the steering wheel to direct you in everything that you do. May God bless you all. Thank you.